So I was one of more than 10,000 people who streamed into Prince's Park last night, uh, clutching candles uh, as a sign of respect uh, for a young female comedian who was murdered there. But also it was a demonstration of solidarity and resistance against uh, violence against women but also there was it was also outrage about the police statement which indicated that women need to be aware of their situations that women who walk late at night um, are really inviting some form of trouble and I think there was an outpouring of outrage by women against that statement by the police, which was one of the reasons why the vigil was called Reclaim Prince's Park Vigil, because while the event was not really a political event in an overt sense, it was a political event in a... Um, in, a, in another way um, because it was basically saying women have a right to walk around the streets and in public places at whatever day or time of the night um, we choose or need to. Um, you know the police statement uh, basically indicating that women shouldn't walk late at night um, is a crazy statement. It was sort of implying that women should be catching taxis and Uber everywhere. Well, as if most people can afford to do that anyway. I mean, people are all the time walking home because of the lack of public transport, but also where you get off public transport, you have to walk a certain distance to get home. Um, it's just a ridiculous notion. And really, if you take it to its logical conclusion, the police is indicating that women shouldn't walk unchaperoned. And really, women don't want those sort of strictures of being, you know, at the beck and call of a male. And what if you're in a, in a family which is not very supportive, which is violent, to be forced to rely on the men in your family if you're in an unsafe domestic relationship? And also in the commentary by women in response to the police statement, there's also recognition that the vast majority of violence against women is at the hands of male partners or ex-partners or other male family members. Violence and murder against people like Eurydice are relatively rare. They're shocking and tragic and horrible, but they're quite rare. The vast bulk of violence against women is again is by male partners or ex-partners of women or other male members of the family and in fact violence against women is the leading preventable cause of death in women far higher than cancer or traffic accidents or all of the other um, sorts of um, diseases and things that women can get um, it's and I think there's a certain recognition in that crowd there that gathered in the vigil last night that we need prevention, not more law and order measures. And I think if you look at the social media posts and all of that, I think that is the overwhelming thing that women want. They recognise that there's a need for a change of attitudes. There's, there's a need for, to eliminate sexism in society. We need prevention. Um, we, and some of us know that the government or, or media or the police or right-wing forces will try and manipulate this, sentence, this sentiment around Eurydice to try and win support for more of a law and order approach, more surveillance, etc. But in that park, there, it, it was a well-lit park. There are big floodlights in that park. Um, there are CCTV cameras in that, that park and while CCTV might have helped catch the perpetrator of this crime, it didn't save Eurydice's life. That's the key thing. We don't want to find dead bodies. We want to prevent these crimes from happening beforehand and the only way can, we can do that is with social change. Um, we know there's nothing innate about sexism. Um, so there is what we need is a social movement, a social movement that can help change attitudes, 
as well as government funding in the sorts of programs that change attitudes, but also um, government funding in the sorts of things that will enable women to leave oppressive uh, and violent and unsafe relationships and, and family situations, which means money for public housing, means money for all night frequent public, public transport. It means eco economic issues for women. There's also a need to grapple with sexist culture under capitalism because the capitalist society, capital, the capitalism, um, basically ferments sexist attitudes, misogynist attitudes, um, rape culture. I mean, you can see it all around you in terms of advertising. So on one hand, they condemn violence against women, although, mind you, they tend to only condemn violence against some women, women who they see as undeserving of violence, whereas they, there's a double standard in the media when it comes to poor women or women who might be drug affected or women who are sex workers or women who are Muslim or Aboriginal. Um, there is a double standard with regard to the media's response to violence against women, which we need to be aware of. But, the, but at the same time that the, capital, the capitalist media condemns some violence against women, they also um, encourage and, and um, you know, advertising in a culture which is highly misogynist. So in, in advertising, whether it's print media or social media or, or um, film clips or TV, um, women are totally treated as sex obj objects. Um, they might have a few little, um, a few little cues to uh, make the image a bit, conf uh, a bit confusing. So sometimes they mix images of women in power with those same women also being sex objects, uh, and that whole um, reduction of women. Uh, in, as sex ob objects through advertising and so forth is um, that really promotes these sort of attitudes. We've all seen these Hollywood films, usually the romantic comedies, where um, you know male male actor um, pursues woman, woman rejects him, but you just have to keep on uh, making advances to the woman until she eventually succumbs and realizes you love her. I mean, in reality, that is stalking behaviour. Uh, it's the textbook definition of stalking. So, you know, we've got a very mono uh, misogynistic culture which is really driven by big corporations. <laughs>